you know, I got to say this, is that it was clear watching Monday Night Raw that WWE was trying to compensate for things because they don't have interesting, compelling characters or compelling, gripping, fascinating, emotionally investing, engrossing stories that fans can hang on to. They've got to go for returns and surprises and shock and awe because that's basically the only card that WWE can really play right now, especially when it comes to Monday Night Raw. Because that whole operation is an absolute, complete, and total abortion. If you agree with me, and you don't already, you should smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter so we can talk about this type of stuff. But that didn't always have to be a bad thing. Like, wrestling can be too clean in its presentation. Like, there should be some randomness, some spontaneity, some surprise. Like, that fundamentally isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. Now, if you always go off of surprises like it used to be back in the day with ECW, it seemed like all the time, like, there always has to be a surprise. Well, then it kind of stops becoming a surprise because you're expecting the surprise. That means it's an expectation. That means it's not a surprise anymore. A surprise fundamentally meaning something to the effect of you didn't see it coming. It shocked you when it happened. You couldn't have envisioned it. Like, for example, if CM Punk walked out on Monday Night Raw next Monday night and had a microphone in his hand and that didn't get out on the dirt sheets or anything beforehand, that would legitimately surprise people. You know what I'm saying? But this whole thing of like WWE having to go back into the Legends bucket, see Goldberg, having to sit there and rely on debuts and returns to try and pop the crowd, see Keith Lee and Karrion Cross, like it is a reflection, it's a symptom of much deeper seated issues within WWE and its creative philosophy, especially for Monday Night Raw. And I think one thing that is clear for everyone is for the most part, nobody saw the ending of that show coming last night. You had Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley for the Raw Women's Championship. And a lot of people are thinking like the crowd's chanting at the beginning of the match, we want Becky, we want Becky. Like you're thinking, a lot of people are thinking that they put this on as the main event because either Charlotte's going to win and then Becky Lynch is going to come out or this match as it's happening, Becky Lynch is going to come out. And that's going to be the big thing. That's the way you're going to end Raw. And that absolutely is not what freaking happened. Instead, what happened is the newly minted superhero character, Nikki Ash, with the dumbass name and everything, comes out with the Money in the Bank briefcase that she just won last night and cashes it in and cashes in successfully and leaves Raw as the Raw Women's Champion. There are surprises and then there are stupid surprises. And yes, we're going negative here. This was a stupid surprise. Let's not even get to the fact of it almost seems kind of dumb in terms of your timing to have Nikki Ash win the Money in the Bank when she did. When that character is still relatively new, you really haven't developed it much. You really haven't done much with it. You really haven't given the fans much of a chance to get emotionally invested in that type of character. You haven't focused on some of the storytelling elements, which of course we'll talk about WWE and Raw specifically. What the hell do you mean storytelling anymore? You wouldn't know if it bit you in the ass. The point being was it probably wasn't her time, but too late. They went there. Now, it's not like she won it in some type of underhanded fashion or anything like that. Like, it was a creative finish, like I had talked about in the Money in the Bank review. It was a creative finish. Visually, it looked great. I didn't agree with the decision. The match before it sucked. But at least the finish was unique. The finish came across well. The decision... But now that you had her win, like, you're packaging her as a superhero. That's the gimmick she's trying to go for here. That's what she's come up with. And not just you know, some type of superhero, but the kind of like kid-friendly, believe-in-yourself, positivity type of superhero. The one that can make you gag, but one that also could be incredibly kid-friendly. So it makes sense. So then when you have something like that, you have two stories 
three stories, I should say, that you can really tell here. Number one is that she fails to cash in successfully and therefore sends her down a different path as the superhero. And then you've got kind of this rebuild and redemption story. Like she got so close to the mountaintop, but she didn't get it done. There's a story there. The second piece is you have her call her shot and cash in clean and successfully instead of going down the tired old thing of, hey, I'm going to cash in like a snake because I've got that opportunity whenever I want it. Like have her be different. Have her have some ethics and morals about the way she conducts and carries herself as a sports entertainer and have her say, I want you to know that I'm taking my shot now. You could have done this shit at SummerSlam with her and Charlotte. You could have said, you know what? I want everybody to know that it's coming. I want you to know that it's coming. I won't believe in myself and I can beat you at SummerSlam for the Raw Women's Championship. Now you've got a baby face that people want to get behind. People want to like. People are going to be emotionally invested in. Not just because Charlotte Fair Flair sucks dick. Figuratively and literally in many ways. Because um, obviously she does. I can't imagine being a fan thinking she's good. But either way, it's very easy to hate Charlotte Flair. Now when you take a babyface character like a mass superhero Nikki Ash type and she has the money in the bank and she's cashing it in clean and she wants to be Charlotte Flair one-on-one -on -one clean at SummerSlam, that is absolutely a direction that gets her over in a big, big time way. And imagine the reaction you would get at SummerSlam if she did end up beating Charlotte for the Raw Women's Championship. You've got that story. Or you go the third option, which may be the most intriguing of all, is that all the superhero shit was just bullshit. It doesn't really make any sense, but sometimes trying to understand the female mind doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like the only thing sometimes harder to understand than the female mind is the male mind, but she could have been like, this is a ruse, this is a fluke, got all these people behind me and it didn't matter. Ha ha ha, I did whatever it took and now I'm the Raw Women's Champion. See? Now you know they're not going there. But to have her sit there and instead of doing one of those three options, but you're trying to present her as a baby face, make her likable, make her relatable, make her somebody that the kids are going to get behind and everything else. You just blew your freaking wad in one night for what? So you can try to pop a minuscule ass rating when most of your fans aren't paying attention? You just jobbed out Rhea in a stupid ass story between her and Charlotte in a stupid ass match at Money in the Bank. I don't care how much you nerds like spots and moves. It was stupid. Just to sit there and a night later basically have Nikki come here with no build up, no anticipation for the moment coming, no suspense built, no story told, just bam, we're going to go right fucking into it because we've got to have something shocking and surprising. <laughs> Lazy. The potential was there to do so much more with this. In any of those three fashions that I talked about, you could have done any of them. They just made her seem like everybody else. She saw an opportunity and she took it. That's not superhero behavior. That's stupid. And if you continue to trot her out there and prostitute her out there as a baby face, it just makes you look even more idiotic and moronic. That's not a superhero trait. That's not a superhero characteristic. That's dumb. And then to sit there and do it and not even wait a little bit of time. Like, why not do it at SummerSlam? Why not have that be a big moment in a big spot? You know what I mean? It just makes no freaking sense. None. You could, listen, you could be happy for Nikki Cross and be like, hey, I'm happy she's getting a run as the Raw Women's Championship. I'm happy she's gotten the opportunity. You may feel like she deserved it before. I don't agree with you, but... I could say, you know what, the way they operate with the women in their company, most all of them are going to get a run with the belt at some point in time, unless her name's Tamina. Uh, they're going to get a run at some point in time. So if they're going to get a run, so be it. And you know what, I like the fact that a wrestler bet on themselves, took a chance, even if there are things I feel could be done much better in terms of the gimmick itself, at least she bet on herself, took a chance, you know, tried something different. I applaud that. I respect that. So I fundamentally don't have an issue with her being the Raw Women's Champion at all. My issue is about the timing, the execution, and the fact that you're selling short so many storytelling 
potential possibilities here that could have made her either a fantastic heel or a fantastic baby face. Instead, you just made her fucking cookie cutter. All for the sake of you just wanted to surprise people for the fuck all of it. Like, there's no plan with this. Because you would say, oh, there's a plan because they had her win and the next night she cashed in. No. That doesn't indicate there was a plan, especially any type of real vision with it. Because you would have done more to make Nikki Ash look better, potentially, before she would have won Money in the Bank. Although sometimes you say WWE tries to intentionally deflect and distract from the fact that you're going to have somebody win by having them lose a bunch. So who the fuck knows anymore, which is stupid in and of itself. But you had the newer character win and then come out the next night just to cash in, like everybody else. That's so dumb. You guys tell me what you think. Like, was it a surprise, good surprise? Was it a surprise, dumb surprise? Just a a shocking, like, what the frick are you doing? Are you happy with Nikki Ash cashing in the money in the bank and becoming Raw Women's Champion in this way? Are you really? Has our patience dwindled that much? Has our desire and need for instant gratification gotten to a point that you can't wait at all? Just imagine if they had waited a couple of months. Just imagine if they had done this a little differently. How much better it really would have been. Could have been so much more than what it ultimately was. And man, I tell you what, if that doesn't represent the WWE of the past decade along with what's the point, I don't know what the hell does.